Payback period, it measures how long would it take for our investment to be repaid back. But payback period has one major drawback. It doesn't take into account time value of money, which means it assumes that a dollar today is equal to a dollar after one year, which is not true. Therefore, in order to overcome the problem of not considering time value of money, we need to calculate discounted payback period, which means we need to get the present value of each cash flow first in order to take into account our time value of money. So let's assume that we have the same example, which means we have years 0, 1, 2, and 3. We have our free cash flow, which is negative 100 at year 0, 40 in year 1, 40 in year 2, and 40 in year 3. Then we need to calculate our discounted free cash flow, which means we need to get the present value for each cash flow. So at time 0, we'll have negative 100. At time 1, we need to use the present value of single cash flow, which is future value divided by open bracket 1 plus i close bracket to the power n, and we'll use it for each year. So for year 1, we'll have 40 divided by open bracket 1 plus 9% close bracket to the power 1. This will give us 36.7. For year 2, we'll use the same formula, which is 40 divided by open bracket 1 plus 9% close bracket to the power 2. This will give us 33.67. And for our third year, it will be 40 divided by open bracket 1 plus 9% close bracket to the power 3. This will give us 30.89. So now we need to calculate our cumulative discounted free cash flow. So our cumulative discounted free cash flow is for year 0 we'll get the same number, which is negative 100. Then in year 1 we will get a discounted free cash flow of 36.7. So I need to add negative 100 plus 36.7. This will give us negative 63.3. And then in year 2 we'll receive 63.67. So I'll say plus negative 63.3, it will give us negative 29.64. Then next year we'll receive 30.89, so I will get negative 29.64 plus 30.89. This will give us 1.25. Then our last number of cumulative discounted free cash flow in our example here at discount rate 9% is 1.29. If you remember, this number is equivalent to our net present value. So here we see that our net present value is positive, which means bigger than zero. Therefore, we accept the project. So in order to calculate our discounted payback period, we need to know what will be our last negative cumulative discounted free cash flow. So it will be negative 29.64. At which year? Year two. What will be our next discounted free cash flow? It's 30.89. Therefore, our discounted payback period is equal to the year of the last negative cumulative discounted free cash flow, which is year two, plus our last negative cumulative discounted free cash flow, which is negative 29.64, and then use absolute value, which means remove the negative sign, divided by our next discounted free cash flow, which is 30.89. This will give us 2.96 years. Therefore, we could make a relationship here, which is every time our net present value is bigger than zero, our discounted payback period will be less than maturity. In our example here, maturity is three years, so it will be less than three years. Then let's have the same example, but we will consider our second scenario, which means we have a WAC equal to 9.7%. So we will have here the same number, three years. Our free cash flow is negative 100, 40, 40, 40. Then we need to calculate the discounted free cash flow. For the first year, it will be the same. And then I will use a discount rate 9.7%. So for the first year, we'll use the present value, which is future value divided by open bracket 1 plus i close bracket to the power n. So it will be 40 divided by open bracket 1 plus 9.7% to the power 1. This will give us 36.46. For year 2, it will be 40 divided by open bracket 1 plus 9.7% close bracket to the power 2. This will give us 33.24. For the third year, it will be 40 divided by open bracket 1 plus 9.7% to the power 3. This will give us 30.30. Then we need to calculate our cumulative discounted free cash flow. So for the first year, it will be the same. Then I need to get the summation of the negative 100 and the discounted free cash flow we will get in year one, which is 36.46. So the summation will give us negative 63.54. Then I need to sum this negative 63.54 plus the discounted free cash flow we'll receive in year two, which is 33.24. This will give us negative 30.30. Then I need to add the discounted free cash flow we'll get in year three, which is 30.3. This will give us zero. Remember that our last value of cumulative discounted free cash flow is our net present value. So in this example, our net present value is equal to zero. 
which means we will be indifferent because NBV is equal to zero. Then we need to calculate our, con our discounted payback period. So what will be our discounted payback period? Simply, our cumulative discounted free cash flow will be zero. Therefore, I know that it will be zero in year three. So I can just say year three directly, or I can use the formula. Where is our last negative cumulative discounted free cash flow? It will be negative 30.3. At which year? Year two. What will be our next discounted free cash flow? It will be 30.30. .30. So our formula is discounted payback period is equal to the year of the last negative cumulative discounted free cash flow, which is year two, plus our the value of the last negative cumulative discounted free cash flow, which is 30.3, negative sign. Then I will use absolute value to remove the negative sign, divided by our next discounted free cash flow, which is 30.3. .30. This will give us three years. So either I look at if we have a value zero, it means that we're going to choose the zero. If not, I need to use this formula. So what's the relationship here? Every time net present value is equal to zero, I know that our discounted payback period will be our maturity. Here in our example, maturity is three years, so I know that it will be three years. I can know the value of discounted payback period just by the relationship by looking at net present value. Then we will look at our third scenario where we have our WAC, our discount rate 10%. So we'll have the same years, 0, 1, 2, 3, our free cash flow negative 100, 40, 40, 40. Our discounted free cash flow for the first year, it will be the same. For first year, I will use the present value of single cash flow and I will use WAC, the discount rate is equal to 10%. So it will be future value divided by open bracket, one plus interest close bracket to the power N. So for the first year, it will be 40 divided by open bracket, one plus 10% to the power one, it will give us 36.36. .36. In year two, it will be 40 divided by open bracket, one plus 10% to the power two, it will give us 33.06. In year three, it will be 40 divided by open bracket, one plus 10% to the power three, it will give us 30.05. Remember, we need now to calculate our cumulative discounted free cash flow. Therefore, for year zero, it will be the same, negative 100. Then I need to add this negative 100 to what we will receive in year one. Therefore, it will be negative 100 plus 36.36, it will give us negative 63.64. Then I need to add what we receive in year two, which is 33.06. It will give us negative 30.58. Then we need to add what we receive in year three, which is 30.05. It will give us negative 0.53. Remember, the last value of our cumulative discounted free cash flow is our net present value. In this example, at WAC equal 10%, our net present value is negative, which means we reject the project. Therefore, can we calculate our discounted payback period here. Look here, what is the definition of discounted payback period? How long does it take to get our money back? If we're going to make a loss, it means what? We cannot recover our investment back, which means we cannot get our money back. That's why we'll discover that here, our cumulative discount free cash flow will never be positive. All the time it's negative. Since we have net present values equal to negative, we discover that our cumulative discounted free cash flow will never be positive which means we cannot recover our investment back. We will make a loss. Consequently, there is no discounted payback period. The discounted payback period cannot be calculated.